awoke this morning to some news on the radio that the Food and Drug Administration of the U.S. government is establishing offices in China. Uh, When I heard that, it jarred me. What in the world is the Food and Drug Administration of the United States government doing establishing several offices in China? And then there was another phrase that they said, this is all a part of globalization. Now, for a long time, we've been hearing this word globalization, but does anyone really understand what it means? Do you understand what it means? I think we need to, because it appears to me that globalization is a fancy name for the process of throwing the world into one world government. And the reason I'm so concerned about that is because the Bible prophesies right in the end time, just before the Battle of Armageddon, there will be a system of world government set up to create a one world governmental system. I looked up the word globalization. Let me give you a couple of definitions that I found. Uh, This was on a website called Globalization 101. Is it the integration of economic political, and cultural systems across the globe? Or is it Americanization and United States dominance of world affairs? Now, those are the two definitions widely embraced, one by some, the other definition by others. But notice the first part of this definition, the integration. When you integrate something, you bring it into unity. You bring it together. We're all familiar with racial integration. So integration uh, is of the economic, political, and cultural systems across the globe. Now, if you integrate economic, political, and cultural systems around the world, you have one world government. Uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, in his famous book, Perestroika, said there are three basic conflicts for war, economic differences, political differences, and religious differences. He theorized that there would be a way to bring these things together. And actually, way back in 1987, when he wrote Perestroika, he was actually proposing globalization. Now, in the book of Revelation, chapter number 13, it actually prophesies about these three elements. Verses 1 through 8 deals with the one world governmental system, the political ideology plus the political leader of the world. Uh, Verse 11 through 14 talks about a world religious system with a world religious leader. The Bible calls him the false prophet because this whole house of cards is going to end up collapsing before it's over with. However, there'll be a lot of damage done before that uh, ultimately occurs. And then verses 15 through 18 talk about the one world economic system. So isn't it amazing that in a book written 2,000 years ago, we have these three elements that now they're saying make up the process of globalization. In another website about globalization, it said the notion that humanity stands at the threshold of realizing one single unified community in which major sources of social conflict have vanished. Global integration. So they're saying if we can have a single unified community that the major sources of conflict will have vanished. Exactly what Mikhail Gorbachev said in his book, Perestroika, way back there in 1987. So since the Bible prophesies one world government, let me just read a couple of the passages to you so you can understand. I'm not just saying this out of nothing. It's Revelation chapter number 13, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads, it's talking about the world government beast representing the end time prophesied world government, the Antichrist. I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world, all the world wandered after the beast. And then it goes on in this 13th chapter of Revelation, verse 7 and 8, and it was given unto him the Antichrist, this one world government leader, to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds, all tongues, and all nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship 
him, give their allegiance to him, sort of like an Obama rally or something like that, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, please don't mistake what I just said. I did not mean to intimate that Barack Obama is the Antichrist, but I was just simply using that as an example of how the Bible might be referring to worship. We know during the times of Adolf Hitler that people would stand for their, with their hands raised for two hours at a time in adulation of this great political leader that had risen on the scene of Germany. So when we pull all of these things together, it's so interesting to realize what is actually happening here. When we pull all of these events together, uh, we realize that globalization is the forming of one world government. Strobe Talbot, the longtime advisor to President Clinton, he was in the administration for seven years, and they went even further back together. They were roommates when they were both Rhodes Scholars in England. But Strobe Talbot said in an article he wrote in Time Magazine in 1992 that uh, mankind in the 21st century would no longer exist in the structure of nation states, but that we would that national sovereignty as we have known it would cease to exist, and that we would all answer to a single global authority. Well, that's the process of globalization. It simply jarred me when I heard this this morning that we're now establishing offices for the Food and Drug Administration of the United States government around the world. Uh, in closing, listen to one of the statements that was actually made in this report. It said, a permanent FDA presence in China will help us address the challenges presented by globalization. So there it is. Throughout Scripture, there are more Scriptures than I enumerated to you today. But throughout Scripture, it talks to us about globalization, how it's all coming together, and now then we're watching it actually happen. We are actually watching uh, the setting up of the one world governmental system that the Bible prophesies is ultimately going to happen. So that's where we are right now. Prophecy is coming to pass. Uh, we are in the end time right now. Everything is being fulfilled. So what's your job and mine? The Bible says this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Then shall the end come. That's where we are right now. We have to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Do you know what the gospel of the kingdom is? It's very simple. It's simply the fact mankind does not know how to rule himself. Globalization, by the way, is going to fail as long as man is doing it. Mankind does not know how to rule himself, but the time is coming after the globalization effort fails that Jesus Christ will come and set up true globalization. The Bible says he will rule over a kingdom that will never pass away and never be destroyed. Once Jesus gets here, we're going to have 1,000 years of un uninterrupted peace with no war. Now, prior to that time, under the present system of globalization, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars as mankind tries to stamp down all resistance to globalization. It's all going to culminate in Armageddon. But when Jesus Christ comes back, the wars will stop. Then we'll have true globalization, true peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And if you want to be a part of that kingdom, Jesus said, except a person is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Because true globalization cannot be imposed from the outside in. It has to come from the inside out. Jesus Christ said, the kingdom of God is within you. It's righteousness, it's peace, it's joy in the Holy Ghost. Until you and I have inner peace how can we hope to have outer peace until our marriages are healed, our lives are healed, our emotional existence is healed, and all of that comes through Jesus Christ? Uh, once that happens, then we can experience the true benefits of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And as all of you know, that's the reason Jesus Christ came to this earth was to give us just that. And we don't have to wait for the kingdom to come, but we can have it within us right now and then we can become agents of change that will bring this whole world into the true message of globalization, the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.